Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Teaching English on Durus Ain Super Goal 4. Before we start, we would like to welcome Mr. Fawaz al Agil, the interpreter to the sign language. As always, we start our class by reviewing the objectives, what we are planning to achieve at the end of this class, inshallah. The students will be able, uh, by the end of the class, to answer comprehension questions based on listening. Also, they will be able to pronounce la sound in, a sh in the short form of will. Now, uh, we are still in Unit 5, and the title of this uh, unit is What is the weather like? And our class today is going to be on Section 4 and 5, Listening and Pronunciation. Before we start our main class, which is li uh, listening and pronunciation, let's make a quick revision on the previous lesson. You remember in the previous lesson, we studied uh, how to make a future tense, okay, and how to deal with the uh, auxiliary verb will. You, you remember in unit four, we studied it's going to be fun. So here, going to here indicates something in the future also. And this unit, what is the weather uh, what is the weather like here? This is a question about uh, the climate or the weather. And usually when we talk about the weather, we talk about uh, the present time, and sometimes we talk about prediction and what we expect to happen in the next day. Okay, look here, this is Nora, and Nora is going to tell us about uh, 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 some sentences using the phrase, go to school. She will tell us, in different tenses. Like here, she says, I go to school. When somebody says, I go to school, what do you understand? You understand that is a regular thing to happen. So let's say every weekday, I go to school every weekday. But when she says, I'm going to school, that indicates that she's going at the moment of speaking right now, I'm going. Okay, and when she says, I went to school, here she's telling us that she did that in the past. Okay, the action happened in the past and she, she can use uh, the uh, time phrase yesterday. Also, uh, when she says, I have gone to school, that indicates that she uh, has done that thing already and time is not important here. Again, I go to school, I'm going to school, I went to school, I have gone to school. Here we have these four sentences in different tenses. Same meaning, but the time is different. But what, what about if we want to talk about the future? Tomorrow, for example, next week, next month, next year, and so on. For tomorrow, we can say, uh, we, she can say like this, I'm going to go to school. Notice here, I am going to go. And you have to notice here, going uh, to here is uh, a model verb, which means, which indicates the future. It has nothing to do with go. They are similar, but it's completely different. Here, going to indicates the future, but go is the best form of uh, the action that you move from one place to another. I'm going to go to school. That means she is planning to do something in the future. Also, we she can say, I will go to school. It, it means almost the same. I will go to school. I'm going to go to school is almost the same. Okay? but. Is there a difference? Yes, there is a slight difference. We will not go deep in this, and we have to, t uh, to uh, learn that. When I say I'm going to go to school, we mean by that the near future. The near future, something that will happen uh, in the, the uh, uh, near future. Uh, but when we say I will go to school, when she says I will go to school, that means it's not in the near future, that's something uh, later on. Uh, also, when she says, I'm going to go to school, that indicates a plan. So she is planning. She has a prior decision and she plans to go to the school. But also when she says, I will go to school, that might mean also a promise. So she promises uh, her parents, for example, that she will go to school. She says, I will go to school. That is a decision. Uh, also, when she says, I'm going to school, that she is sure, there is an evidence that uh, she's been, like she's taking her uh, uh, school bag and uh, she's going to school and that, that is uh, sure about, uh, she's sure about uh, the action she will do. But when she says, I will go to school, 
that indicates prediction. She's not uh, sure about that, and there is no evidence that she will go, okay? Uh, also here, we, we will talk about uh, future with will. We use will to talk about something that you think will or will uh, not happen in the future. If we will use it in the uh, affirmative form, I will go to school. If the, we use it in the negative form, we can say, I won't go to school, or this is a contraction of uh, will not. I will not, you can uh, contract it into I won't, I won't. Okay, uh, here you can see the contractions of using will with uh, pronouns. You can say, I'll go to school, for example, or I'll travel, and so on. You'll, he'll, she'll, it'll, will, and they'll. Okay, you can use uh, the verb in the base form, I'll travel, that is a contraction of I will, you will, he will, she will, it will, we will, and they will. Okay, in the negative form, you can say I won't travel, I won't travel, he won't travel, and so on with all uh, the pronouns. Okay, also you have to notice how to make a question. We, we can use this sentence, for example, you will travel next summer. You're telling that somebody that he is going to travel or he will travel next summer. How can we make it a question? We just exchange the model verb will with the subject you like this. Okay, you can say you will travel next summer. What did we do here? We exchanged uh, the model verb will with the subject, which is the pronoun you here, and we, make it, we made it a question. Did we make any changes? Do you notice any changes here in the sentence when we change it from affirmative uh, to interrogative to a question? Yes, there are three changes. What are they? You can see here, the W here, we, make, we made it capital. Why did we make it capital? Because we started the question with will here. Also, we changed the, the, the Y in U into a small letter because it, it became in the middle of the sentence. So, you, will you travel? next summer. Also, there is a punctuation mark. We changed it from a full stop in the first one into a question mark when we made it a question. Okay, again, you will travel next summer. That is affirmative sentence. In the interrogative, in the question, will you travel next summer? That is a question. The answer can be yes, I will, or no, I won't. Okay, so we'll have it again here. Okay, will you travel next summer? We can exchange, as we said here, uh, and we, can, we make the changes, as we said, uh, to change the capital letter and to make the, uh, the question mark and to add it, uh, replacing the full stop. Okay, yes, no question. As we said, will you travel next summer? The answer is yes, I will, or no, I won't. Will you travel next summer? Okay, also when you want information question, Okay, you can just add the information question you want. Like here, you want to ask about the place, you say, where will you uh, travel next summer? Okay, he just we add the, the information question or the WH question, where, which means asking about a place. Where will you travel next summer? Also, you can ask about, ta uh, about the means or the way or the method that you are going to use to go uh, or to travel this next summer. How will you travel next summer? Here, how is asking about the means. Maybe I go by plane, maybe I go by car, and so on, okay? Uh, will you travel next summer? Also here, it's a question uh, with yes or no question here. We can use it as a yes or no question. But when we add an information, uh, uh, an information question here, we uh, use why, for example, here. Here, why indicates asking about a reason. Why will you travel? Next summer. Here we are asking about a reason. Okay, so the information question like this one, what will you do in the next summer? I will, prob uh, I will probably travel. I'll, here is contracted as we said. Where will you go? This is also a question about the place. You can say, I will go to Jordan. Uh, how will you go? You are asking about the means. Okay, you can say, maybe I will drive. I'll drive. That means I will go by car. Okay, you notice here, as we said before, we use will uh, with probably or maybe to express doubt or uh, unnecessity. That means you are not sure about it. Okay, also we had an, an exercise in the previous lesson. If you still remember, you look at the time phrases here uh, in, the in the summer, in the winter, in spring, 
uh, in fall, tomorrow, on the, on the weekend, uh, next weekend, or next week, next year, next Saturday, and in the future. Okay, if you ask about this activity, if you want to ask, you can say, what will you pr probably do in the summer? That means you are not sure about it. What will you probably do in the next, uh, in the, uh, do in the summer? You can answer like this, I'll probably go horse riding in Najran. Another way also to ask about uh, this action or this activity, what will you uh, probably do on Saturday? You can say, I'll probably hang out with my friends. Okay, and now we move to our main class, which is listening. And you will s listen today in our uh, class today to uh, uh, weather broad uh, uh, broadcast, okay, forecast. The weather forecast here, you can see Ned Weatherby is telling us about the expected weather for tomorrow. And you will see some uh, uh, symbols like this one, which this one indicates sunny. And here this one indicates rainy. Okay, and here snowy, and here this one, uh, just to remind you again that this indicates cloudy, and this sign means partly sunny, or you can say partly cloudy. Okay, and this one is uh, windy. Okay, these are the main uh, symbols that usually the broadcasters use when they uh, introduce or they present the weather forecast. Okay, before we start listening, as we said before, you have to gather as much information as you can about what you are going to listen. Now you know, you know that you're going to listen to a weather forecast. So you know the, the speaker or the uh, broadcaster, what he's going to talk about, you know the main theme, so it is easier for you to understand and to predict the meaning of some difficult words that you might hear. But before that, let's see what this uh, picture means. Okay, what, what is it? What's this device? You, have you ever seen this device before? And this one, this is something or a device that can tell you about the weather. We call it a, a barometer, okay? What, what does it do? It measures changes in the atmospheric pressure and helps to predict whether it will be wet or dry, okay? The, uh, the people who are specialized in the weather usually use a barometer just to uh, predict or to guess about uh, the weather. Okay, now before we listen again, uh, let's answer, uh, 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 try to find an answer for this question. Could the weather report be uh, about this, our city? You think that will be about our city? Uh, why or why not? You can guess about that, you can find the answer through the, th the three clips that we are going to listen in the next slides. Also, does the weather forecaster say the name of the place the weather report is for? You will listen now and you will try to find out if the broadcaster said the name that he's telling us about or not, okay? Also, there, is a, uh, there are some questions after you listen, but as we said before, uh, reading the questions before listening will help you understand more. So you're going to answer some questions after listening. What are these questions? You're going to decide whether the statements are uh, yes or no that means true or false let's read them and this will help us uh, learn about more uh, learn more about uh, this listening uh, the weather was fine on thursday afternoon on thursday afternoon was the weather fine or not let's let's uh, see uh, after listening okay the temperatures will be in the uh, uh, 60s, 60s on friday afternoon on friday afternoon what the temperature is going to be this is also very important to consider, okay, when you listen. Uh, Saturday will be beautiful and sunny all day, okay? Uh, is the weather going to be sunny and, uh, and beautiful all day? This is what we're going to find out when we listen. Number four, it usually rains in the spring. In the city or in the place that uh, the broadcaster is telling us, do you think that uh, the, uh, during spring time, the season of spring. Do you think uh, it is rainy, or there, uh, there uh, usually it, ra it usually rains on sp uh, in the spring? This is what we'll fi find out also. Number five, it will probably snow on Saturday. Will it snow on Saturday or not? This is what we're going to find out from the listening as well. Number six, you won't need boots and jackets in the mountains. When you go up to the mountains, do you think that you need a jacket? and boots 
which means that the weather there is cold. This is also you are going to listen to and uh, find out. Okay. Now it's time to listen and to, to find out uh, the answers for uh, the previous questions. Let's listen all together. This is Ned Weatherby, your weather forecaster. This afternoon, heavy rain fell on our town. The big storm caused a lot of damage and traffic came to a complete stop. The storm is now over and cleanup can begin. Okay, so this is the, 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 uh, the, the first part of this listening and telling us about uh, the heavy rain and the big storm and the damage you can see. Uh, the, uh, there is a lot of damage because of the storm and also because of the storm there is uh, big traffic. Okay, also the storm is over. You can notice here it's no longer storm now and uh, the rescue uh, is starting or uh, the, the uh, clean up is started. Okay, the second part here, you're going to listen to uh, more details about the next days, which is on Friday, uh, how it will be. You can check, check here, it can, uh, you can guess that it is going to be sunny. And what is the weather going to be uh, during day and during the, uh, the night? Okay, also what you need, do you need a coat, a heavy coat or you need a jacket? This is what you're going to find out during the lesson and this will help you to understand more. So let's listen all together. Now, let's look at the weather report for the next few days. Friday will be warm and sunny during the day and cool at night. Temperatures will be in the low 20s during the day and will fall to 10 degrees Celsius at night. You won't need a heavy coat, but take a jacket with you. Okay, we move now to the last part of this listening. Uh, this part is talking about Saturday. Okay, and remember the questions that we asked you before. Uh, what's the weather going to be? You can check, uh, can, you can tell from the signs here, or the symbols about the weather. What are the things that you need during Saturday and during uh, Sunday? Let's listen and find out more uh, about uh, the days, Saturday and Sunday. The weather on Saturday will be nice in the morning and cloudy in the afternoon. It'll probably rain at night. These showers are quite normal during the spring, so you'll have clear weather on Saturday morning. Sunday will be cold and windy, and maybe it will snow in the mountains. If you're planning to go there, don't forget your boots and jackets. And now for sports, here is Matthew Delaney. Okay, so uh, as you said here, uh, this is one of the questions that uh, we have the answer now. You will need the boots and you will need the jacket in the mountains because it is snowy and very cold uh, up in the mountains. Okay, now we go back to the questions. The first one, the weather was fine on Thursday afternoon. No, it was not fine as we uh, listened to a while ago. Uh, number two, temperatures will be in the 60s on Friday afternoon. That's not correct. It will be in 20s as we uh, listened to. Saturday will be beautiful and sunny all day. Okay, that is also, no, it will not be su uh, sunny, it, uh, it will be uh, uh, windy and uh, uh, as we said before, uh, also, uh, yes, windy. And number four, it usually rains in the spring. That is correct, it, will, uh, it usually rains in the place which was not mentioned. Uh, number five, it will probably snow on Saturday, no, it will not. Number six, uh, you won't need boots uh, and jackets in the mountains, uh, that's no also because uh, you need them since there is uh, snow up in the mountains. Okay, now you're going to listen again to the same audio, but now we have it in audio script, so you listen and read at the same time. So let's start listening and reading. This is Ned Weatherby, your weather forecaster. This afternoon, heavy rain fell on our town. The big storm caused a lot of damage and traffic came to a complete stop. The storm is now over and cleanup can begin. Now, let's look at the weather report for the next few days. Friday will be warm and sunny during the day and cool at night. Temperatures will be in the low 20s during the day and will fall to 10 degrees Celsius at night. You won't need a heavy coat 
but take a jacket with you. The weather on Saturday will be nice in the morning and cloudy in the afternoon. It'll probably rain at night. These showers are quite normal during the spring, so you'll have clear weather on Saturday morning. Sunday will be cold and windy, and maybe it will snow in the mountains. If you're planning to go there, don't forget your boots and jackets. And now for sports, here is Matthew Delaney. Okay, now we move to the second section of our class today, that is pronunciation. What we're going to learn in this uh, section, uh, we are going to learn how to pronounce the uh, contraction of I will, and will in general with all uh, pronouns. You contract it like this, you make an, apost uh, uh, an apostrophe, and you, uh, you, you write double L, and you pronounce it I'll. Okay, you say I'll, also you say you'll, you say he'll, you say she'll, okay, which uh, is a short form of she will, will also, that indicates we will, okay, and they'll also, which indicates or which sh is sh a short form of they will. Now let's listen to your uh, colleague uh, reading and pronouncing these uh, statements or these sentences and these uh, contractions. Listen to the L sound, then practice. I'll, I'll meet you at seven. You'll, you'll get cold. He'll, he'll travel in the summer. She'll, she'll go shopping next week. Well, we'll have fun on the trip. They'll, they'll probably stay home. Okay, now we move to some exercises in the workbook that will be on page 108. Uh, exercise F, you will need to write a question for each answer. Use the future tense with will. Okay, look here. What are you going to see here? What uh, is the, the question that you can ask? You can ask like this. What will you do this weekend? Here, look at the, the information question that we're using. We're using what? Because we're asking about a thing or an activity. What will you do this weekend? How can you answer? You can say, I will go camping. Like, like you can see here, you can write it uh, like this. I can go, I will, sorry, I will go uh, camping. And here, we can ask about uh, a mean, or, or sorry, a means. What can we say? How will he get, oh, sorry, how will, how will he get to work? We're asking about the method or the means that he's using to go to his work. We can say, he will uh, get to work uh, by car, or he will get to work driving, okay? So here we're asking about uh, the, uh, the method or the means. What will you do after uh, college? Here, after, after you graduate, you finish college, what are you, your plans to do when you finish? You can say, uh, I will probably study biology, for example. I will study maths, and so on. Okay, now uh, we move to exercise G. You read a story, you need to answer questions, and you need also to give your opinion. Now, before you listen and read, uh, answer the questions here. Where will Omar live uh, next year? Also, you, you, so you, uh, as we said before, from the questions, you can uh, g uh, gather much information about what you are going to read and what you're going to listen, so you know that it is going to be about Omar, and will Omar tell us about where he's planning to live next year. Will he eat in the college cafeteria next year? Is he planning to eat in the cafeteria next year or not? Will his room be clean or dirty next year? Next, will his room be noisy or uh, quiet next year? This is also what we're going to find out when we listen. Okay, let's now read and listen to uh, the story as we said before, very quickly. Omar is living in a dorm at college this year. He really likes his classes, but he doesn't like living in the dorm. It's noisier in the dorm than it was at home. It's harder for him to study in the dorm too. He likes his roommate, Fred. They hang out together a lot, and they both like to run in the morning. Omar and Fred are now good friends, but Fred never helps clean the room. He leaves his clothes and books all around. Their room is always messy. Omar eats in the college cafeteria, 
and he doesn't like the food there. There aren't any cooking facilities in the dorm. Omar's uncle's family lives near the college. They invited Omar to live with them next year. Okay, so this is the text of this reading. Uh, and now let's move to the last part of our class today. That is the answers for uh, the questions that we mentioned before. Answer the questions and give your opinions. Where will Omar live next year? Uh, the answer here, he will probably live with his uncle's family. Number two, will he eat in the college cafeteria next year? No, he won't because he doesn't like the food there. Number three, will his room be clean or dirty next year? His room will probably be clean because it was described before as messy. Will his room be noisy or quiet uh, next year? His room will be probably uh, quiet because he's moving uh, to his uncle's uh, house. Okay, and by this we come to the end of our class today. Thank you for watching and see you inshallah in our next episode. Goodbye.